Good evening, everybody. Uh, we'll go ahead and get uh, started, uh, but before we get into the meeting, um, if you would stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance, and Mr. Tyler is going to lead us in the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, a God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all the blessings you've given us. We pray for this city. We pray for the people that run the city, the employees that work this city. We pray for this commission. We pray that we make the best decisions for this town. We ask you to please be with the flood victims to our south and ask for them continued blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us for our June 4th, uh, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. I'll call this meeting to order. If we can do roll call. Here. Roy Covert. Here. James David. Vivi Haney. Here. Shannon Mueller. Here. Peyton Parker. Here. Kevin Parsley. Here. Ben Peters. Here. Dale Tyler. Here. Mr. Dane just showed up as well, so. All right. There you are. Okay. We'll just mark you here. <laughs> All right. Uh, any questions of last month's minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Motion by Mrs. Haney. Second. Second by Mr. Coverts. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, there is one tabled item this evening that we will not uh, hear, and that is a Board of Adjustment B19-31 Landmark Custom Homes. Uh, it's a corner of Kerry Smith Road and High Highway 112, so we will not be hearing that tonight. Uh, first section is tabled items, large scale L19-10 WC and Associates, 167 East County Line Roads. This also has a waiver 1901, detention requirements presented by Bates and Associates. Hi, my name is Christian McGuire and I'm the project engineer with Bates and Associates. Staff comments? Uh, all comments from the utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval of construction plans. Uh, provide a minimum of one tree per 25 linear feet along the lot lines per perimeter landscaping requirements. Uh, supplemental additional plantings alongside existing ve vegetation where necessary to satisfy requirements. Provide a minimum buffer of 10 feet in width planted with a minimum of one shade tree and seven trumps per 25 linear feet of street frontage. And then we have the detention uh, issue that the engineering department needs to address. Yeah. Um, after reviewing the drainage report, the on and uh, on site and downstream conditions, as well as the nominal increase in flow, the engineering department uh, recommends this waiver for approval. Do you have other details? Okay. Anything else? All right. Any other comments that you guys have on this? I would just like to discuss the requirement for the landscaping, the one tree every 25 linear feet along the entire side, the boundary. I just seems a little much. You didn't ask for a variance, so right now the requirement is that's what you have to do. You'll have to come back and ask for a variance if you don't want to do that. Okay, so a formal variance and we can right. discuss it further? We don't, okay. we don't negotiate those kind of things at the table until you apply for a variance. Okay, well I apologize, I didn't understand that's how it was. And you think one tree minimum standard of every 25 feet is excessive? I, I do. It, since there is existing canopy along the south, okay. and there will be a private six foot privacy fence for a large portion of his, of his uh, lot there at the front and there's no additional structure going in there so it'll just be parking space okay any other comments okay any let me get from the any questions or comments from the audience okay, it's to the commission go ahead baby um, I guess I just have one question for engineering. Um, so 
on, so on the minimum standards, because right now we have detention required for, and, and when you all are looking at that and making the decision that it, there isn't a need for that, can you explain? Uh, based off of uh, what's, what the improvements are defined as, it's the amount of increase that's coming off site is, uh, is basically negligible in this case for uh, the different uh, frequency storms. Okay, so, so then the requirement that was in the original decision was because, was that just a standard computation or? It, yes, that's a standard comment we have for all developments. But in this case, since it would be uh, uh, what we feel is uh, an extra expense for very little uh, change of the site, we, that's why we recommend the waiver to be approved. Okay, okay, because my concern is just, you know, even when it's small, when you start adding up from one business to another, an inch here, an inch there, that yes. eventually that does add up to the area. And so I was out there in the rain, and that area does, I think, have some drainage issues with the stream. And uh, each of these, uh, as they come in, each of these requests as they come in will re be reviewed as a case-by-case -case basis okay. for all of these. So if they came back and added an additional building, Yes, they or would need to. Or additional paved areas or something. If, the requirement could change and they would have to do detention. Exactly. That's just for what they're proposing right now. Okay. So will this little piece then that's be documented so that when the addition comes in, if it's negligible as well, you will add what was added now to that? Uh, we can uh, include that, yes. Okay. That, I think that would be good because otherwise people do things in little Okay. Any other questions or comments? Be a call for the vote for the waiver. Call for the vote. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. <coughs> Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Waiver passes 9 0. And do we have a motion on a large scale? Motion to approve subject to staff comments. Motion by Ms. Haney. Second. Second by Mr. Peters. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Large scale passes 9 0. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Next table of item L19 12, Zamas Custom Cabinets, 117 East County Line Roads. Uh, there's also a variance B19-32 for a deviation of commercial design standards uh, presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Um, this project, um, we've got an existing 4,000 square foot building which fronts county line and we're proposing a 7,500 square foot addition, a new building in the back. Um, we are asking for uh, a commercial design standard waiver um, for the rear building um, and we're going to make improvements to the facade of the building that face the existing building that faces uh, county line, um, and we we will comply with. I noticed there was a couple of comments about other uh, deviations, uh, the sidewalk and the central design feature. We will comply with those uh, those two design standards. Um, so it will just be the deviation for the commercial design standard waiver on the existing building or the proposed building for the to trade with the existing building. Um, I'll answer any other questions. Okay. Staff comments? Can we uh, see the elevations? We got new elevations this morning. So currently that facade is a metal building with a, an old canopy. Um, proposing to kind of do a two, two, two style, um, one rock with brick facade, um, new canopy, uh, new parapet area. We're also going to fence the entire frontage um, so that we can't can't really see back into the site. Um, try to clean that up a little bit. So you're moving the parking from in front of the building to the side. Yes. The side. So there'll be landscaping in front of the building. Yes. There'll be green area that's not there now. So you're not asking for a variation of the uh, foundation landscaping anymore, right? Correct. So basically, we'd have a new front. The rest of the building would be a metal building 
that's existing now and the new building to be constructed would be all a middle building that's mm. behind the fence. Yes, middle building, yes. That's the request, sir. Any other comments? And you're taking off the other two. You'll you'll do the sidewalk, you'll do the community features, we'll take care of all that. That's the only deviation. Yes. Uh, engineering, are there any comments on this one on engineering? No comments on engineering then. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? Let's do the commission. Jason, this is an entire industrial area, correct? An industrial park from so yes. there's no houses to be seen and correct things. Okay. Well now. Keep in mind, a cabinet shop is not considered to be an industrial activity. It is a commercial activity. That's why it's still commercial design standards. Uh, the property is zoned. It's, it's zoned I, I-1. Zoned I-1, right. But this, it, it, the, the commercial design standards don't necessarily go with the zoning classification, but the type of use it is. And as a cabinet shop, that is considered to be a commercial use. So that's why we're doing this. So it's kind of a mixture of the two. Any comments? Additional? How, bi how big is the front building? It's 4,000 square feet total. It's about 50 feet wide. That faces county line. And you're ju just the front, not the front and partial sides, just the front? Yes, sir. Is that, how does that work out? I mean. What percentage of the building <coughs> will be other than metal on that front building? I mean, I, I support it. I mean, I think we get a better deal getting, you know, make the front look better because right now would they be required to do anything to that existing building as a com as a cabinet shop they are because it's considered to be a commercial use and they're adding another building but that's the reason we got into this but not if the building stayed just like it is and it didn't uh, it, what they weren't building another one we wouldn't get anything done to it but the new building would have to comply not the old building. right the that's new building would have to comply so For they're me, doing the front of the old building instead of doing anything to the new building. Correct. I'm sorry. Okay. We, we discussed that. I didn't bring it up again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And you're doing landscaping along the side. Yes. See the trees that are included. They're paving the entire area. Uh, parapet high, is high enough to cover the. Yes. The heating air units that are up there too. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, so specifically what are we not getting out of our standards? The new building will not have any, will not meet the design standards at all. That's it, the one It will be a standard would, metal building, yes. Right, that would be building. required to meet it. All of the upgrades on the facility are going on the front that faces County Line Road, and then they're screening the entire front with a fence across the front. Moving the parking from in front of the building to the side, doing landscaping in the front of the building, uh, making the sidewalk connect, and putting a sidewalk across the front, all of those other kind of things are taken care of. I just, I just, when I see those buildings and we have the front looking really nice and the sides not, it, I mean, it just, to me, not sure. do any favors to our city and protecting the the value that other people are putting in that are following the design standards and yeah, I think this creates a value though for, for the area I mean if you go to if you drop down there there's no other all the other buildings are metal buildings down county line I mean we could leave this building the way it is and do the improvements on the back too um, I don't know what that gains in the city from a value standpoint though so Patsy said earlier that they would still have to fix up the front building or if not? this is not approved, the new building is what they would have to meet the design standards, which is not the building up front. So they're not making any changes to the building up front. Okay, okay. So in this case, they'll fix the front instead of. Right. So we're kind of getting a swap. Yes. And I, I can tell you the first elevations they sent in and what they were going to do the, to the front was not even close. And we had a meeting earlier, or late last week, and they came back doing the entire front. And I think we've accomplished a lot with this. Okay. I'll call for the vote. On, or a quick question on. Go ahead. Your drawing shows a tree canopy. Is that going to be put on the side? I'm sorry, what? Back to the landscaping. It shows trees are going to be planted along the side of that piece of property. 
Yes. yes. So what in, that in itself could be somewhat of a buffer. Right. Not getting anything on the west side. Okay. So Vivian, do we have a call for the vote for the variance? Okay. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Variance passes 9 0. I have a motion on large scale? Motion to approve, subject to staff comment. Mrs. Haney? Second. Second by Mr. Covert? Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Large scale passes 9 0. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next section is rezoning R19 19, First Assembly of God, 1605 West Robinson Road or Avenue uh, from MF12, C2, and SF2 to a P1 presented by Paul Harrell. Hi, my name is Paul Harrell. I live in Rogers, Arkansas. And basically, we're planning for future growth. And after meeting with the Planning Commission, we found out that we were zoned all over the world, not where we're supposed to be. So this request is to get us properly zoned for our future growth. <clears throat> Staff comments? The adopted comprehensive land use plan indicates medium density residential use for the area. Three, your zoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan is recommended for approval. Uses that commonly have moderate to large scale assemblies of people such as churches, Funeral homes, membership organizations, and other institutions should be appropriately located on adequate sized parcels with sufficient space to accommodate the off-street parking and accessory needs. Such uses should be located so as to minimize any adverse or undue significant burden or adjacent or adjoining land uses as well as that portion of the street system. Been there a long time. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mrs. Haney. Park, oops, I'm sorry, Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Zoning passes 9 0. Staff will prepare the ordinance and it goes to the council on the 25th. Thank you. Next section is conditional use C19 12, Harvest Hills Baptist Church, 5084 Harbor Avenue, use unit 42. Church Synagogue and a C2 presented by Ron Weaver or Josh Weaver or John Boyd or all three. <laughs> so. Hi, I'm John Boyd with Harvest Hills Baptist Church. Any additional comments of what you guys are looking for here? No. Okay. Staff comments? Okay, you indicated in your letter that you want to have hours of operation from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday through Saturday? Yes. Okay, so you anticipate having activities during the day at if, the church? If necessary. Okay. okay. Um, the ingress and egress to this property is acceptable. It's just that the drives weren't marked, so we don't know what the width of the drives or the parking spaces. Uh, Off-street parking and loading areas when required. Uh, we need a site plan that indicates the size of the spaces and the driveway widths to see that there's adequate parking for both the facility that's there, which is the testing facility, and for the church itself. When you're going to be open 8 to 8, it's at the same time that's going on, and we need to make sure that there's enough parking for both of those. So we will need a drawing that shows how that parking is laid out. It is the testing facility. They'll be moving to the low facility. So that front building that they're in is the building that we are requesting to um, take as our uh, church facility. Okay, so you're going to move into the front building, not the back building. Correct. Okay. Where there was some confusion because I didn't I didn't understand that be, to be that way. Okay. How many? Uh, how big is that building? It's right two thousand square feet. Okay, your site plan that you submitted showed parking that didn't have any dimensions or anything with it. Do you know what the back building is going to be used for? Uh, the back building is a little service bay area. Um, okay. They they um, are a shuttle company. They have the large buses that drive John Brown University and a few other other universities. So they have a few buses there, and that's it. Okay. We're gonna we need a site plan that shows how the parking is divided between the two facilities, 
and dimensions of the parking because the drawing you said it just shows spaces on there I don't know if all of them will fit or not based on what our requirements are the refuse and service area is acceptable the utilities are acceptable uh, there's not any screening uh, were you going to put up a sign or use the existing sign that's there and, and change it out for the church or are you anticipating another sign? Uh, we'll use the existing sign for now um, and then if we do we'll, we'll uh, have something drawn up and submitted to you. Okay, you have to submit yes. to get a sign permit to do something there. Um, the size and the shape is acceptable. The, there's not any landscaping shown, but does the building have landscaping along the front and along the side? The existing and right now it does not it it um, has the overhanging and it has a area for landscaping we plan to put some in um, but it's just uh, all grass right now okay. uh, it's generally acceptable in this area the comments that we have uh, proper changes to the building would would occur prior to receiving a certificate of occupancy you need to submit a plan to scale to be reviewed prior to any construction the building will require at least two exits the exits will require proper to ADA compliant hardware assembly areas of 50 or more based on occupancy load calculations <coughs> will be required to have panic hardware on doors that latch until pu reaching public ways all exit doors will require exit signage emergency lighting <coughs> and exterior landings corridors required from the assembly area to reach an exit door the corridor will require a one-hour rating and <coughs> fire extinguishers will be required all that has to be done before you can get a certificate of occupancy. <coughs> Sorry. And we will need the parking plan. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. When do they intend to move out of that building? Do you know? Um, <coughs> I, we were told that it was the 15th. They'd be, they'd be moving out, but it could be as late as the 30th. Okay. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? So <coughs> if, if this were going in as a church, what would the landscaping requirements be? Well, if they were building a new building, they had to do lands, uh, you know, perimeter landscape or foundation landscaping and all that kind of stuff, parking islands. <coughs> stuff too. They're not making any additions to the existing building. <coughs> Just gonna make that work inside. Are you gonna have a kitchen in there? Uh, no, ma'am. There's a small little sinkette in the back, but we're not going to change any of that. And Dwayne, you all have looked at it, and, and you'll set the occupancy limit of what the assembly area will be, and that's what the parking has to be based on. Yes, ma'am. There's there's 52 parking spaces with this with this um, facility. There's not 52 marked spaces out there. You might could park 52 cars, but there's not there's not any striping on the parking lot at all, is there? Yes, ma'am. There's 52 marked spaces. Okay. I didn't see them, but I haven't been out there. I, been on the side. I do have it. I do have it drawn up on our, on our plans here. Um, those the spaces may not show from the aerial or, or that you have, but there's 52 for that building, and okay. then it's 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 approximately 2.76 acres. Most of it is parking. Yes, ma'am. But how many spaces is required for the number of bays and stuff in the building? We'll have to cut the back. We'll have to calculate that. Now, do, is there an activity that goes further to the north of this that they drive through that too? Because there used to be dumpsters parked back there. Do you know what's being used for that? I, I do not know what's used okay. back there. Um, I, I don't. I didn't see any dumpsters back there, but I didn't drive back there. So I think so they I, finally all got moved. I think that was containers. Oh, they were containers, not dumpsters. That's right. They were containers. You're right. Dwayne, did you have a comment? I was just going to, based on if there's actually 52 that will meet the city's requirements for width and space, that's adequate number for what we got for an occupancy load, but we'll, we'll recalculate for you. Make sure we have enough parking spaces, yeah. Okay. Vivian, so, did when, you? We, when we do this, Patsy, it's <clears throat> the conditional uses for, even though these are, both these buildings are on the same parcel, it looks like, but we, we're just doing. Condition is for this church at that building, very, and that's it. Just the building, that's it. Because right. that was the thing when I drove back there today, I was also under the impression it was yeah. the back building, and there was a lot of people parked, I think, waiting to test right there. 
Uh, the last time I was out there too, and I didn't realize that they were moving the testing facility. No one had, had indicated that. Your application didn't say that they were testing it. I assumed you were using the other building too, and that was the concern about how we got all that parking and all and that stuff probably, together there's because there's lots of people there some days. Yeah. Right. And there's lots of paved yeah. space for it. Changes it a little bit from what we. But yeah. yeah, but but they'll have to have some plan for the people that are using that same drive. Yeah, we'll need to know what, how many bays they are, what kind of office space they have to calculate how many spaces needs to be left for that that facility. They, that that facility has its own parking um, that's also um, set out with handicaps and and its amount um, separate from the 52 that are also okay. with uh, this front building. I just couldn't see that from the site plan that you submitted before. I couldn't tell any of that was going on there. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Let's be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mr. Cover. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Additional use passes 9-0. Staff will prepare the resolution goes to council on the 25th for final approval. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next conditional use 19-11 Carl Madewell, Washington County Parcel 001-15059-000, tandem lot split presented by Baitons and Associates. Uh, Andy Hooper with Bates and Associates. Aaron, I'm turning this one over to you because I know it has some unique situations. All right, so basically on the east side of the um, kind of highlighted area there, it is owned by the Aaron's folks. And uh, um, as you can see, there's a road that goes up to Haverton. And uh, it's kind of cut off by the um, Beaver watershed folks own that land. So I don't, this is as far out there on our ETJ as you can get. I mean, it is literally on the line way out there. I don't have any issues with them uh, squaring up the land as long as they can get an access easement across the Beaver uh, watershed folks district. Because technically the property is landlocked. On the plat, they have access easement going down the, that little dirt road running to it, and uh, but it still needs to get across the property at Haverdeen Ridge. So, I mean, I really don't have any concerns from a staff standpoint. Our whole point of having conditional uses on tandem lots is to try to do as, as organized subdivision as possible. The only thing that is preventing that at this point is getting the access easement. So if you put the conditional use contingent on that, then we should be achieving our goals as a city for intent for that ordinance to be met. So, so your recommendation is the conditional yeah, use? Yeah, I, I would just recommend it. With the idea that the yeah. access easement has to be filed before yeah. it can be filed. On the current plat right now, they only have an access easement for that portion. And I think that's going to be their biggest challenge is getting the, um, the, the ownership that is under that you know, whoever owns the lake, I think it's the Beaver, Beaver Watershed is who was identified on here as um, getting them to grant them access. I don't know how they get access to it, um, but it is so far out there. For us just trying to meet our minimum subdivision goals, I think this is what we would go for even if it was in the city, um, is that access easement and some kind of orderly subdivision. So, Do you have any questions on it? I don't know if this is relevant or not on there. I mean, so you have about three different large parcels of land mm -hmm. that are just next to it that have sold. Um, I assume that's county, but if those got annexed, is that Fayetteville or Springdale? It, it's in our planning area, so. Um, but it's not contingent to any con yeah. to anything to be annexed anytime soon. Right. Okay. Like if there was a city, if there were two cities adjacent to it, it whoever they would petition annex to is where it yeah, could I guess my question go. would yeah. be is if those became um subdivision developments does does that have any impact on this at all whatsoever um i mean it's basically even though there's a bunch of lines there there's two people that own land here you have um i think it's the madewells is that how you pronounce it yeah so this gentleman right here is on the west side mm -hmm. of the property and then the aarons are on the east side of the property and they pretty much own everything on either side of that property and uh, they're kind of just squaring up 
their access to where I think the errands don't have to cross at one point. It's pretty much making it all contiguous because uh, at one point the errands did own a little bit cutting off his little parcel down there. So it's just basically them adding to that. And uh, like the only thing I'm typically concerned to is how do you cross your land legally or get to your land legally um, and they have to cross that beaver watershed property to get there. So, I mean, that really from a city standpoint, that's really the only thing I'm kind of standing in the way on. Mm -hmm. and because if we were to annex it in, that's what we'd ask. Is this property landlocked? Yes. Do you have a proper access easement that makes it unlandlocked? No. Okay, well, that's what we want. And uh, if it starts to subdivide or develop further than that, then we engage our subdivision development guidelines when it gets to a higher standpoint. So, but yeah, it's really way out there. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm good with this one. It's, yeah. it's I'm kind of making some comments that in, in the future of some of those others, because mm -hmm. those others don't necessarily go to Haberton either, and they potentially could be. No, I mean his whole situation. his whole property, like this plat, will give access to his property if he gets that one, because his whole property is landlocked. Okay. Yeah, I mean he all four of those deeds on that west side, kind of touching that little highlighted area, are his property, and they're all landlocked. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we, that's unfortunately the nature of the beast when we get out in our ATJ. You see a lot of segments of land that's all landlocked, and it's like, well, how do you access that? Well, the only way to do it is access easement. So. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission. Call for the vote, and, and I guess that's with is the access easement. Right. That's the commission for it, yes. Okay. We have a call for the vote by Mrs. Haney? Arsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Cover? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Passes 9 0. You'll need to get the access easement before that flat that, uh, split can be filed. Next section is uh, on plats. Uh, we have replat 19 01, Harps Edition, south side of McRae and north of Pennock, presented by Alan Reed and Associates. Good evening, uh, my name is Alan Reed. I'm here tonight representing Cliff Jackson, uh, who owns property, uh, a nine acre tract of land, south of McRae, north of Pin Oak, and east of Patricia. And uh, what Mr. Jackson would like to do is reduce his nine acres to about five acres. In doing so, he has three neighbors which have stepped up and offered to buy the portion of the property which lies north and east of an existing drainage swale. So the property on that side of the swale would be incorporated into three present landowners and he would reduce his acreage from nine to about five. Basically it doesn't have anything on the other side of the drainage ditch. That's what he's trying to do. Keep all his property. Right. Exactly. He'd like to keep every he'd like to be able to manage everything on the southwest portion of the ditch. Yeah. Okay. Back comments. Uh, I need the dimensions of the lot lines right away, the street center lines, the utility easements, and the instrument numbers and any offsite easements. The only comments we have. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission. Motion to approve, subject to staff comments. Second. Motion by Ms. Haney. Second by Mr. Peters. Peters. Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Replat passes 9 0. If you want this to go to council next Tuesday evening, the ordinance needs to be in our office by noon on Thursday. That'd be fine. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, final plat 19 02, Ramsey Place, northwest corner of Ball and West County Line Roads, presented by ESI. Thank you, Jason Apple with ESI. Um, requesting the final plat for phase two of Ramsey Place. Staff comments? Um, all comments from the utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval. All items on the attached list must be satisfied prior to assigning the plat. Uh, did we get the names of the streets worked out with GIS and have they all been approved? I'll verify, I'm not sure. That's why I'm asking because I'm not sure that they've all been verified either, but we need to get the street names and all verified before we get the final plat. 
approved. That's it. Any questions or comments from the audience? Let's do the commission. Motion to approve, subject to staff comments. Motion by Ms. Haney. Second. Second by Mr. Covert. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Powell. Oh, Powell doesn't hear anymore, sorry. <laughs> Final <laughs> plat passes 9-0. Uh, if you wanted to go to next Tuesday evening's council meeting, you need to get to our office by noon on Thursday. And next final plat, 19-03, Haberton Ridge, Phase 1, southeast corner of Haberton and Horn, presented by ESI. Jason Apple with ESI. Um, this is Phase 1 of Haberton Ridge subdivision, requesting a final plat. Staff comments? Items on the attached list must be satisfied prior to obtaining my signature. Our comments from our utility companies must be addressed prior to approval. I don't think there's any street name issues on this one. I think those have already been approved. Okay. okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? Oh, that's in the packet. We disregard that? Yeah, I think we got all the rest of those taken care of. A motion? Motion <clears throat> to approve subject to staff comments. Motion by Mrs. Haney. Second. Second by Mr. Peters. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Final plat passes 9 0. Thank, Thank you. you. Ordinance to our office by Thursday at noon if you want the next Tuesday's agenda. Okay. Uh, next section large scale developments. We have two. One is uh, L19 14 come and go 4451 North Thompson. It's also a variance 19-29 variance for deviation of commercial design standards regarding foundation landscaping presented by Ozark Civil Engineering. Good evening, Mike Klotfelter with Ozark Civil Engineering here representing Come and Go. Uh, looking for a large scale development approval for a new store located at North Thompson and uh, Highway 264. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. We also have a Come and Go representative present tonight as well. Okay. Staff comments? Comments from the utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval of the construction plans. The utility lines have to be put underground, uh, provide perimeter landscaping for the eastern lot lines, and your commercial design standards is only foundation landscaping, right? Yes, ma'am. And that's a common occurrence with coming goes. That is correct. And you have additional landscaping around the site. Yes, ma'am. To, to make up for that. Is there any engineering comments on come and go? Comes Aaron. Is I don't know if he has an engineering comment or not. Uh, no, no. I'll, st I'll stay all the engineering. Um, the, uh, because this is their prototype, the foundation landscaping will include, because they go hand in hand, the entryway vestibule landscaping as well. So we have those twofold requirements, just so you guys are aware. Um, we just, when we initially sat down with them, we were talking about, um, they were like, this is what we have to bring to the table. We're not allowed to change out of that prototype. And we're like, okay, these are the two things that you would have to go to the planning commission and ask for a variance on. Uh, well, we said one thing, and but it does include the vestibule entryway and the, the foundation landscaping. So we just want to make sure y'all were clear on what that was. So. Okay, but, but they are taking that landscaping that would go there and adding it to other parts of the... Well, if you would property. like them to, that's, I mean, you can ask that. Okay. I understood that yeah. was a one-to-one. -one. Well, they, we they put additional landscaping around the site, have they not, is in addition to what was normally um, required? I I'd have to <laughs> talk with the engineer on that because uh, I didn't know if that was what they were intending. I mean, he can, and, is that what and, you're and you intending? you don't have any landscaping on the east side of the property. I, the only reason I say that's what we did on the other come and goes is they took the what was needed around the, the uh, it, the foundation landscaping and added that same amount of landscaping around the perimeter of the, of the yeah, site. We haven't calculated out, but we have, there's a 10 foot buffer or a five foot buffer requirement for the perimeter. And we have more than that along the east side. <coughs> okay. You'll look at their sites. They look yeah. very well laid. So, but, but from what I'm understanding, he's asking you a variance to deviate from having to do that whole standard. If you would like for him to exchange that somewhere, y'all need to 
discuss that, I guess, as a, a commission and then ask Show him. Show the you calculations know, of how yeah, much landscaping. And have him work that out with staff where he would do those. So um, just, I guess, when y'all are deciding, just figure out if y'all want to bring it as a variance for deviation of that or if he wants to hear it as that and see how you vote or if you guys want to see if you can exchange it somewhere else on the site and then if y'all accept just that change and not really at that as a deviation. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Be the last ones you get without the, the new checklist too. Starting with the next one, the uh, commercial design standards will have that entire, and we'll know exactly what we're doing. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he was understanding that he was going to be putting it somewhere else. So I just wanted to make sure okay. that the consultant yes. was represented. On Do that. we know what the percentage of landscaping was on the site prior to removing? Um, Man, it's. It is a pretty barren site if anybody's driven then. north yeah. on 71B. Um, I'll be honest, this will be a great improvement for that area. Um, we're, we're pretty, ex I mean, it's not very often you'll hear a planner saying he's ecstatic about getting a gas station in a location, but that is <laughs> going to be a definitely facelift, so. Yeah. I think there was a question of a, a, a current business that's just south of it that has accessibility to that. I think that. they got all that worked out. Until okay. this afternoon, all that got worked out. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. That really was just between the two parties. It had, sure. it's not something the city could enforce, but I think they got it all worked out. So. Any other comments? So would it be a deal killer to do a one for one exchange? I mean, whatever would be required for foundation landscaping somewhere else on the site? Well, if you notice, we do have quite a bit of green area that's around the pond as it stands now, and we do have the additional along the east property line. So, you know, typically we, we don't ask for the one-to-one. -one. Uh, in the past, we haven't, as far as when variances come through, we're just asking for that variance straight out. Okay. It would help my vote if you were willing to go one-to-one. -one. Okay. Now, did you, does that include just uh, green area or does that include trees, shrubs, things like that? Well, I think like the that? shrubs that you would normally plant as foundation landscaping, just yes, find sir. another place on site to put those Okay. Same products. Absolutely. Yes, sir. If, if I mean, that's your choice. But I'm, that's a suggestion. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, okay. sir. Okay, you're saying that you will do a one? Yes, ma'am. Okay, for foundation landscaping. Okay. So variance with a one-to-one. -one. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission. I'll call for the vote. With the landscaping as Ben Peters recommended. I have a call for the vote for the variance, uh, which is the one to one um, deviation. And we have that call for the vote by Mrs. Haney. Over? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Variance passes 9 0. Uh, do we have a motion on large scale? Motion to approve subject to staff comment. By Mrs. Haney. Second. Second by Mr. Covert. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. Large scale passes 9-0. Thank you. Thank you. Next large scale, 19-15 Northwest Technical Institute, Ammonia Building, west of intersection of Turnbow Avenue and Bain Street, presented by McClellan Consulting Engineers. Good evening, Chris Bakunas with McClellan Consulting Engineers. This is for the uh, new Ammonia Building at Northwest Technical Institute. It's approximately 20,000 square feet. There's gonna be eight new parking stalls on the west side of the building, and then they're gonna continue to use the 19 stalls on the east side of their existing building. The existing building and new building are going to be connected via a uh, ADA accessible breezeway. And then storm detention, utility mains, and the road extensions were designed under the welding building technology project, which is just to the west of this. Both of these projects are tracking to be under construction at the same time. Um, happy to answer any questions. Staff comments? What does the building look like? <laughs> There was elevations that we submitted. I don't know if they're in this package right here. Can we get we, to the elevations? We've got a couple elevations. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they should be at the end. It's it's just a metal building. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it sure is that, yes. <laughs> well, and we had discussions about whether or not NTI 
be required to meet the design standards. Uh, it is not a state-owned facility. It is owned by the NTI board. Uh, there is nothing I can find that grants them an exception where they can't, where they're exempted from having to comply with the city's design standards. You didn't ask for a variance. No, ma'am. But the building doesn't meet the design standards. Correct. Okay. So we're we going to hear this tonight, or do, or do we need to table it, or? Hey, well, Austin. if uh, if we hear it, they have to right. change it to meet designs. And we need so the, the, we, we need we haven't we seen what the final. To to the I think that's. I don't really want to get into whether or not a state has to um, conform with local zoning of a municipality. Um, of course, this is not a state. This is a locally owned with I, a, I, you know, I'm not going to get into that argument, but yeah, I already yeah. argued it's not I a state. I thought maybe so. the reason is because it was industrial use is the reason that maybe that that's because it's an ammonia building. That was, so I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, we look at it as an institutional building. We've had multiple large scales on this. I mean, they've done quite a few landscaping. I mean, I don't, I don't see how we would apply commercial design standards to each one of these. It doesn't seem like it would be, but that's, I don't know. I thought the board was a state organization. I mean, they're under the state website, so that's kind of way we looked at it. But, uh, I mean, I, like I said, I don't, that's not a discussion I want to have at this table, so, um, or dais, so. I mean, and I also remember, did, was there, and I'm, this is not, maybe it pertains but i thought that there was a report or a study done about nti that specifically talked about the facilities and maybe how upgrading them would help attract i don't know discussion has been held but i don't know where the status of that report is i don't know when none of that was submitted to us <clears throat> the welding building on the other side you said is going to construction at the same time yes ma'am yeah okay, and what does it look like that one meets commercial design standards right that's no. what i thought Mm -hmm. yep. But I mean, they're only going to do what they, if they're willing to do it. So, I mean, I, I would do, I would, I think that's a legal discussion, man. I'd be like, Sarah, Ernest, I mean, that's, that's for them to determine. So. And they um, did meet design standards on the one across the other. I mean, I've, I've been working with state organizations for years with municipal planning and whenever they want to comply with it, they comply with it. Whenever they don't, uh, they usually try to get along as well as they can with us. If the issue gets pushed then we can uh, go ahead and dictate some case law, I guess, in uh, Northwest Arkansas then. But I don't really like to get into those discussions. So is it a state-owned building or not? <coughs> no, it's not a state-owned facility. Saying it is, you keep saying it's not. It's not. It's owned by the Northwest Arkansas Technical Institute as a 501c3 organization. It is not state-owned. They don't get state funding for facilities maintenance or anything like that, like NWAC does. NWAC had to meet the design standards for the new facilities they built out by the ballpark. And I had asked NTI to have a representative here tonight. I'm not sure where they are, but um, they have told me that they believe they are a state entity. I, and they sent I, that to us and we yeah, replied and to it and, and I think the city attorney's office had the same. It's not a state facility. So I haven't reviewed the documents relating to ownership or anything, so I cannot give you a conclusive um, answer. So I would say for purposes of discussion tonight, I would say they have to meet the standards and they have options um, if they disagree with us. How big is the building? Uh, it's about 20,000 square feet. It's a 20,000 square foot building. That's pretty big. What? And my thing is that it's not even attempting to halfway meet us there. That's just my my personal opinion is it's, you know, we <laughs> we make a big deal about other metal buildings. This is a brand new 20,000 square foot building. And I, I'm not saying that it has to, I would even be in favor of it completely fully complying with commercial design standards. But I mean, this is just, this is the base base level. This is not even like wouldn't bother me so much if they hadn't done the one on the other one. I mean, I think there's I mean, I something I don't, we that don't could even, be done. Yeah, to. I'm, un, I don't, I'm unclear right now on the whole situation, but that's just my initial feeling is that that's, that's large and, uh, and that, you know, I think as is is probably not what I'd want to see. 
Is there any questions or comments from the audience on this one? To the commission. Do you plan to come forward with this this evening the way that we see it? Yes, sir. Yeah, and NTI, I mean, they want to remain good neighbors with the city, and, and they had mentioned that they were willing to work with the city. We did not receive any comments from planning on this. And my understanding with conversations with planning staff is that they agreed it did not need to meet commercial design standards. But could you speak to the security in and of this building, or would that be something that NTI would have to address? That would probably be NTI. All right, this would be a motion. This would be approval of the large scale estimated with the building information. Hmm. Do we have any of the elevations? Aaron, can you guys get to what the elevations are? Just, you put them up here? They should have been the last two sheets in that set. <laughs> One forty seven and one forty eight. <clears throat> I just think it's if it's found that it's not a state agency we are setting ourselves open to, you know, it, it hurts the whole development there of that whole industrial park. But this is where I'm confused because if we vote to approve the large scale and there's no variance, regardless of what the elevations are, if we vote to approve the large scale and there is not a variance request, they have to meet the standards. Is that correct? Unless the determination is made Unless by there's another determination. So my not. thing is I don't want to hold up construction or I don't want to hold it up just because we don't know who owns this building. I, I, so now I'm thinking I just, I'm more likely to just vote it with no variance and let, and let staff or whoever figure it out. I don't know. And then legal's going to have to determine whether or not design standards are applicable or not. So I'll make a motion that we approve the large scale with it having having to comply with commercial design standards i have a motion by mrs haney i i guess the only thing i would say is i'm I, i'm not sure what i'm voting on because the client doesn't even seem to know what category they fall under which is not your fault um I, I'm, I'm just not sure what we're at least for me, I'm not clear on what it is I'm trying to vote for since we can't categorize what category they fall under. So I guess I would throw it back to the client and say, is this really what you want us to vote on in this kind of confusion or, or do you want to table this and talk to your client till we can determine what it is you really are bringing forward? So if you voted on it tonight under the circumstances that we would meet commercial design standards and we find out otherwise then we could come back and apply for a variance correct that's correct so what Vivi's motion was it is approved the large scale is approved subject to meeting design standards if we determine that you don't have to meet design standards then you're ready to go if you have to meet design standards you either have to do it or come back and get a variance mm -hmm. one or the other so I guess to table yeah. it. Sarah, did you have something? No. Maybe I did. Okay. I mean, for the, what was shown in the plans here, it, it's almost as if the assumption is that it doesn't have to meet the design standards. Otherwise, I think there would be a lot more details. So the clarification that Vivi just provided as far as a motion to approve subject to the design standards for the commercial. She's Fairly making legal, a bit of a suggestion as far as a change what we're voting on in that whole piece well I think technically if they don't have a variance not included in there unless if they are truly a state organization in which case we don't have a right to make them get a variance is that correct Patsy that's my confusion yeah. 
I feel like we're voting on it and they'll either have to do nothing or they'll find out that they do have to do something and then just we'll go back through it all again with variances. Is that true? Is that? Okay. That the state doesn't have to. You could restate what the question is for me because I'm a little bit confused about the question. If, if we approve this request, L1915, uh -huh. and it is determined later that they do have to meet commercial design standards, mm -hmm. then they would be forced to come back and submit a variance if they wanted that. Is that correct? Correct. If you approve subject to staff comments tonight, and I'm assuming there voting was a staff yes comment. on this does not give them approval of this building that we're looking at of the facade if there is a staff comment stating that it is a, that it is subject to the commercial design standards and well, if you approve it they the have to issue at hand we have I don't the think point there is. there is no comments because the determination has to be made whether or not that's applicable or not i thought ernest had already made that and i should have mentioned that to you dad and even think about it <coughs> whether ernest i, I hadn't discussed had it with mr kate so i i have an email but i don't remember how long ago it was that's kind of what caused the confusion is do we vote on something we really don't understand and then let I mean them bring it back where do we just go ahead and table it until we can figure out what it is we're I mean you're on. voting on what all right I'll, I'll wait for her on the is there a time crunch that this needs to be proved in that they're ready to start submitting plans for construction or have they submitted their building plans to billing inspection yet they have not this is just going to be a shell for right now so it's it's not going to actually be open for probably, probably another year or so. They're just wanting to get moving on it while the building adjacent to this is being under construction. Do they have an approved large scale for that one and a building permit issued for the other building? Uh, we had the approved large scale. I'm not sure on the building ahead. permit. Ed, do you have a... Uh, uh, Again, this comes down to the state. Um, I haven't seen any plans, so... Okay. Yeah. See, that's um, what I thought we haven't yeah, seen. Yeah, I mean, like the, the 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 Game and Fish Museum, they asked us not to review it, and Community College asked us to. It's all up to the entity whether or yeah. not, and if it's a state entity, we can't make them do anything. It's sovereign immunity stuff. I mean, the decision is ultimately up to the applicant, which is not here, in in this, and. Does it meet all the, don't other have all the, the, the Well, we don't have all the details. I mean, I, I don't feel comfortable voting on something that I, I, I don't really have all the details. I mean, we don't even know if we have the right classification of this whatsoever on it. So, I mean, even if you voted on this as far as um, if it was one that had to comply with the commercial design standards, I'm not comfortable doing that. And, and quite honestly, it's a bit of an inconsistency because we've had other properties that um, I've gotten in situations that have come before us and we're doing a lot of designing up here. This is one that we don't even have uh, all those details on it. So that's just where I'm at as far as not feeling comfortable on this. I mean, if I, if I did have to vote on this, I think you'd understand as far as the direction I probably would be in this whole piece on it. That's why I was asking up front, is this something we want to hear tonight or table to where there's more clarification that can be brought forward to it, especially since it doesn't sound like there is an extreme urgency as far as moving forward with this. If it's heard tonight and voted down, Patsy, what does that mean for him and his client? To resubmit. Any particular timeline or just next month? Well, the next deadline is the end of the month and it would go actually to the August meeting. He'd better off to table it to get back on the July meeting than to vote it down. And, and Patsy, uh, if, if they don't, let's just assume they don't have to comply with the commercial design standards. So the vote would be to vote on this building as it is right now, and what would the staff comments be in that regard? I don't think we have any comments left as far as engineering or planning-wise. I think there's engineering comments, which meeting state code will be meeting those. Um, but like I said, we didn't even receive engineering planning comments. Engineering will have to address whatever engineering comments are on this one. Are they doing detention, or do they have detention already on site that they're tying into? Yeah, the detention facility was designed as um, under the welding facility building, so I that thought. was sized for that at that time. So detention, I don't think there's any engineering comments left as far as this one's concerned, as far as that, and they're building the street, which was approved with the other building. It really comes down to just the building itself. And so, so is it fair to say then it would just be a, a vote to determine worst case scenario if we wanted a 20,000 square foot metal building that doesn't meet our design standards? 
I mean, that's what it comes down to. I can't, I can't find the email. I, I don't search emails on here very well anyway. But, but that's not Ms. Haney's motion. Right, yeah, and then, so, I mean, yeah, and I'm, I'm uncomfortable in that. You want to ask to have this table till next month? Let's work all this stuff out. Yeah, after talking through it, I'm thinking that's probably the best direction to go. I think um, it's a good idea. I mean, NTI does not believe they need to meet city code, but they were doing this as a courtesy. Um, they need to uh, address the issue directly with the city attorney's office, which I thought was addressed, but maybe not. Because if we if we list, I mean, if we vote on it that way, then they kind of get a. They have an escape clause, like a built-in escape clause, because if we find out they do, then it just goes through, that they don't have to meet the standards, right? And just a reminder that it's, commercial design standards isn't just about it being a metal building. Right. It's about there's no break, there's no, you know, not there's no landscaping at the foundation. I mean, it's more no, it's than just a yeah. metal building. I mean, right? and, and no disrespect to you guys, I mean, whatever y'all approve up here, if it's if it's ordinance, they got to meet it. I mean, so it's uh, if it comes back that they're subject to commercial design standards, then they will put in commercial design standards or they will not get a permit. So, uh, y'all, I mean, y'all can say approval of certain staff comments based on the outcome of that, whatever you want. I mean, this is just a formal process for the public to hear it and for you guys to have an option to. Yeah, Aaron, my only it. comment to that is is that we've we've tabled several that were not ready to be presented here. Right. If because it's not the, meeting commercial design standards and that's a requirement. Well, I mean, how is that any different than any others? That well, the only reason it tabled? comes to you is because the ordinance says it has to within 60 days. Okay. I mean, it, it ultimately falls back to staff to do the approval for it, and it doesn't go to permit unless we approve it. Okay. If we voted on this the way it stands right here, right. the assumption of what was presented and what I'm hearing is is that they're assuming they don't have to comply with commercial design standards. If we vote on it, there's still the risk that it gets turned down even with that, which is going to delay you guys if you did appeal it. You're, you're probably not going to hear this in July. It's going to be probably in August as far as that, that whole piece. Additionally, really? if we did vote on this as meeting the commercial design standards, I think you're probably going to have some, some of the same results. So in some ways, we're given options to manage the timing of this to where this could be managed. Um, well, I mean, if you just approve it subject to staff comments and whether it's determined whether or not it has to meet commercial design standards, then it does. But if they come back and say they don't meet commercial design standards, they're going to have to come back to you anyway. So. But just with variances. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, just with variances. So, I mean, that's, that's what we're saying. So, I mean, like, tabling it is not going to, it just pushes the timeline out. Really, it does. I don't it seems know. to me that it's a bit of I'm an incomplete application. We don't even know who the ownership is. And I think that's that piece. I, I'm not. I, ready it's to clear. Vote on this. It's clear who the ownership is. It's the board is recognized by the it's state. It's not clear here. <laughs> it, they're under the state directory as a recognized board of Arkansas. So okay, so you're good with tabling this? Yeah. We need to table it. I guess so. Um, I mean, I apologize that it, the ownership is not clear. Um, like I said, the. The owners have told me that they are a state entity. Um, but if we fear that it's going to get no votes, then I would say yes, just table it. <coughs> when I come back, what can we do to ensure that ownership We is need to schedule a meeting in my it. office with got Blake it. in the city attorney's office, and he needs to bring his documentation, and we need to sit down and make this determination. And then we move forward with that because I thought we did it last time and it was the other way. So I don't know if something's changed since then. Was there some actions taken this last legislative session that would have changed it? I don't believe so, no. There were no actions taken. They just chose to comply with the commercial design standards, which they haven't actually done because the project hasn't been fully approved right. and permitted. It hasn't been. It hasn't. Yeah. Um, it's still sitting out there, and then we still have comments on the previous one. So they are just choosing to comply and play nice with the city. But this isn't even complying. If Aaron and I don't always out. just always agree on everything right. because yeah. I think this, this is a different situation. We need to table this yeah. one and work this one out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next section, Board of Adjustments, B19-29. Let's see. That was done. Sorry on that one. Uh, B19-30, Dennis Potts, 305 West uh, Colorado Avenue, variance for deviation of fence height and backyard from six feet to eight feet, presented by Dennis Potts. Thank you. Uh, my property is the house that has the 
fence that's not very straight and it, right behind uh, right the holding pond or the de water detention pond is um, outside my backyard when I bought the property and we fenced it we were in a hurry to fence it and so we didn't fence to the property line because of the the slope we wanted to get it fenced because we had two little dogs we needed to uh, confined to the yard so 15 years later we want to replace the fence and would like to fence to my property line which at the point where my fence original fence was it starts a a slope down to the the detention pond that by the time it gets to my property line it's about two feet lower than what the the line is where the original fence was and so my request is to be allowed to put an eight foot fence up it's going to be a very nice fence we're going to do cap and trim all the way around um, the instead of it just abruptly ending at the ends and and becoming a six foot pin on the fence on the side we're going to taper it in the first eight foot section down to six feet to give it a a nice contour and, and not just look uh, like it's been thrown together um, and so your eight feet that you're requesting here is to really keep the contour of the of the fences right okay. because where my original fence was when I stood on my patio I don't see any of the detention pond I can see the street the Carrington Avenue I can see the street but I don't see the pond itself if I go to the property line with a six foot fence I'm going to be looking at probably at least a third of the uh, detention pond when I stand on my patio which has a culvert that has been tagged multiple times by uh, street artists and the city's had to come out and paint over it several times so I really don't want to look at that and just this height that is not going to affect anybody else it doesn't affect the 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 property owner that uh, owns the detention pond and uh, none of my neighbors are objectionable to it in fact the neighbor on the uh, east side of my property is actually sharing in the cost of replacing the fence because they are enjoying the use of of that side which was put up by uh, my wife and I originally so that's that's all I'm asking for is to be able to to build a fence that will keep the same sight line that I had before. Okay. Staff comments? We have, I don't think we have any staff comments, do we? Questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? <clears throat> if I might, um, you indicate that the neighbors would not mind that. An eight foot fence on your street on Colorado I believe that to be true. I don't think that'd be a tr obtrusive at all. Mm -hmm. But from Carrington, it certainly would be. The, the neighborhood is remarkably uniform. The homes, the fencing, everything is very uniform. And that view from Carrington back up to your property with an eight-foot fence would be very, very different than anything else that exists in the neighborhood. That's, that's true, except with the eight foot fence they would only see the same part of my house that they see today with the six foot fence fence 15 feet inside my property line mr potts can you clarify because i'm pretty sure you've got your two sides are six foot aren't they yes so it's you're only, only talking more. about the right back the, the sides we are going to taper down from the eight right. foot side within eight within an eight foot section of the fence down to six feet and it's going to run six in the back feet. corners in the back corners only just to give it some contour I like that right just it'll just just step down and uh, as I said it's going to be a, a nice fence with I don't think it it will be <clears throat> objectionable to anyone and it just keeps the same sight line that I have today without uh, uh, you know the neighbors behind me on Carrington can still see the same six feet up on my house that they will be that they do today or they did before I started refencing. Well I, I drove through and that 
this picture doesn't do it justice how unsightly <laughs> it is back there, so I understand. Right. Trying to block your view. Right. I, I'm kind of in line with still the, the uniformity of the fencing in the neighborhood, and my recommendation would be to use landscaping rather than, you know, than well, changing the fence height. We, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what landscaping would would benefit me. I did, I just have to build. I'd have to put a lot of landscaping in to to get to that height. the The option is, I could. Uh, it's my property. I could have somebody come in and and level my lot that uh, out to my property line, and then put a six foot fence up, and it would do the do the same thing as the eight foot fence will. Does that make sense? You know, I, I don't want to spend that kind of money, but uh, I could do that. The oh, other, the other option is I can uh, fence where the original fence was at six foot, and go out to the property line and put another fence up at six foot, and put me a gate in between, and be able to use my property on the inside of the fenced-in area. So you know, I've, there are options. I don't want to do them. I. You know, I just like to, to put a nice fence up that's, uh, that I don't think, you know, I, I realize it's, it's different than the rest of it, but uh, I don't think it's going to be. I didn't get a chance to go out there and see it, but the property 331, the fence on the back of it, is that a six foot? It or is. Is that an eight foot? It is. It is six foot. Do you have that much of a difference of the slope of the back of yours yes, compared yes, to theirs? Yes, there definitely is. Okay. Uh, hers, hers is pretty level all the way to the edge of the of you're, the detention you're gonna, pond you're going to keep the consistency at the top right it would be more at the bottom that there is right the two, the two foot right okay and i i can plant bushes along the back of the fence that would that would uh you know make it less unsightly if that two feet creates a problem but uh we want to landscape inside the fence where we can enjoy the benefit of having uh, uh, landscaping inside our yard. If, if the fence were constructed today, would it just go straight across? I mean, would it be a straight line from 331 to, 30, to your it's property? Not connect, it's not going to connect to there because there's, there's a swell that goes down between okay. the properties. Uh, the, the property line does run down the middle of that swell, but, uh, you know, it's not going to connect to to her fence in any way. It's only going to connect to the, the fence that it's now connected to at this time. Okay. Any other questions or comments? This be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for vote by Mr. Cover. Haney? No. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? No. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Uh, this passes 7 2. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's see. Last item L 18 17 <clears throat> Powell Street Apartments requesting one year extension presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Um, we're requesting a one-year extension for for this uh, apartment project. Tell us why, Jason. Um, you know, currently um, we we are looking to start construction within about 120 days um, from now. Our large scale runs out in June of or in today, I guess. So we're just requesting a one-year extension to get this get this going. I know we've been looking at this for a couple of years. We're breaking ground in. Sorry, I don't know. If we're breaking ground in, how long? What's the 120 projection? days? 100 days. Do we need a year? It's for sale, right? Right now, that mm -hmm. property is. I don't. My my personal feeling is, and I had questions about this because I couldn't remember how we typically do extensions, but I felt like they're normally tied to something. You know, tied to a date or a milestone or something, not just. A year and because sometimes know. they're asked for just simply a year to start. We've done some for six months because they knew we're 
that we're going to move forward in six months. So I think it's it's both ways, depending on what the applicant asks for. It had my only thing was it had some variances, and we had we already have two new planning commission members, and who knows how many more new members we'll have this time next year who might you know I don't know. Well, if we come back, I mean, if we can't do another extension, am I, am I right? I mean, we, we, this is the one year extension, and if it doesn't if something falls through you. and nothing happens, then we're going to, have to resubmit the large scale just like we did last year. Wasn't this done as a PUD anyway? No, it wasn't because it's not big enough. It, it came back as a PUD. Right, it came back but as the, a PUD. But we, we didn't actually execute this plan. Um, there was one one month prior to L28 or 1820, it was 1817. The same 116 units that was approved in 2016. Would six months be considered? I'm sorry? A six month versus a one year extension, would that be? acceptable what's the large-scale requirement do we have to start construction I think that's ultimately what you're asking yeah I, I'd like yeah, to keep the year double the hundred I mean, day projection yeah so you want to keep it a year I'd like to keep the year in, some, in case something happens okay yeah. any staff comments on this any questions or comments from the audience to the commission. Call for the vote. I'm sorry, Ben, do you have a question? I, I was just going to, is it a call for the question? Is that what the procedure is? I was going to call for, for the us. question. Okay. Um, call for the question by Mr. Peters. Mueller? Yes. Parker? No. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Uh, passes 8-1. Thank you. Thank you. Planning director's report. Work session on the 18th at 530. So we continue work with engineering traffic committee and all on the master street plan. Get all that worked out. Anybody have a problem with the 18th? It's our regular meeting date. Okay. Any That's other? all I have. Okay. And I will not be here for the uh, July 2nd meeting. Uh, so Mr. Covert will be uh, chairing uh, for that one. Um, is there anyone else that knows that they're going to be a conflict of not being here on July 2nd? I, I will not be here July 2nd. I won't be here on the 16th. Okay. I'll be here the 16th. Okay. Be here the 16th. 18th, excuse me. I knew you said you were going to miss one. I couldn't remember if it was tonight or the work session. Okay. If you can't be here on the second, I, I would just be proactive about that. And I mean, with the holidays, that might be a little bit of an opportunity, but I just want to make sure we have a quorum for that one on it. So, okay. Any other comments? Um, I, the only comment I have, and it's it, maybe I'm just out of school on this, so I, I'll apologize in advance if I am. I would like to see the city work through issues before we get it in front of everybody. I'll leave it at that. Well, I agree with you, and I, and I understand. I just think that at some point in time, this is a professional body that needs to be treated as such. And at some point in time, when the decision has been made, the decision has been made. So move forward with it. Thank you. I appreciate the comment on it. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.